Hello everyone, this is Instacore here, back from the grave. So I made this decision uh, recently to get my channel refurbished, yes. Well, recently I did upload my crappy music and my crappy speed arts, it's stupid ass stuff. Now I want to give it, give a channel a shot again. Besides, like, it was like two years ago and I have to admit, I did have a lot of fun making videos back then. So why not, let's do it again! So for the last few months, I've been working on new channel art, new profile picture, the really cute kitty one. Also works on some animations. Yes, I learned how to animate. Well, sort of, uh, you'll see. But uh, I also made some captions and stuff, just to refurbish the channel. So this video is pretty much where I put all the crap I did earlier together. And it's also a good way to practice my um, my commentary skills, which are obviously really bad, as you have seen from earlier, and I probably have cut it a lot already. So yeah, about um, this tutorial itself is just a uh, simple tutorial about uh, how to draw a shrub. This is the shrub itself, it's already drawn. Yes, I recorded video already, I know, it might create some paradox and it was gonna be a wormhole appearing in the sky. Basically this tutorial, I'm not only I'm gonna teach you guys how to draw a bush, I'm just going to, I'm also going to teach you folks about uh, the contrast theory and the bit of color theory about toning and about color toning, warm tones, cool tones, well more about warm tones actually, because I already recorded the video, I know the stuff. I know about what happened though. Alright, so the first thing you want to do is to change the uh, settings of brush. So you want your opacity to 4, like so, and your brush size to around 20. I already set it like that, so 20 points something, like somewhere around 20. It doesn't really matter too much, so let's close that. And now let's choose a colour. So the first colour is pretty much a backdrop of a shrub. Now, um, you would like a greenish, t uh, green color to obviously be a sick shrub, but you do not want like this type of green, where it's like it comes out from a highlighter is too bright. It's unnatural and it's ugly. So what you want to do is to choose a color, a greenish color, between um, the shiny green and yellow. So maybe somewhere around here. So get something like that, and for where if you start, you would want a um, darkish tone to the color you're choosing. I'll tell you guys why later, but it's not really relevant for now. So about this dark, let's see, a bit darker. There we go, just right. So you can change it in the in the uh, diamond. Actually, it's just a square, but it's just twisted a little. It's got diamonds in the middle of a uh, color wheel. So. What you want to do is to just use your brush and just scribble around and try to create like a shrub-like shape to it. Because if you look at a shrub in real life, there are like bits of leaves and branches sticking out, so you want to do the same. So basically, it's a thing uh, we artists call the contrast theory. So basically, we use the dark, darker sides, like, well, not metaphorically, but literally darker shades, like shadowy bits, to um, emphasize or contrast, as the name tells, um, the brighter parts of the uh, object you're drawing. If I just use a lighter tone of green like that, the lighter tone of green obviously sticks out of the uh, darker tone of green, and it really creates like this contrast effect and makes it stick out, make it look, makes it look realistic. The first thing you want to think about is where the light comes from. The arrow is a light where the light's coming from, so imagine there's a sun. The sun's here and it just shines down to a bush, okay? This will help you a lot. It's also part of contrast. It helps you decide where to put your dark slash shadowy spots and also your light spots of course. So let's just mark out the really dark bits like the shadow parts. So choose an even darker tone. Obviously the shadowy bits are gonna be on the left because there's no light coming from the left line. So therefore you need to you just color it a bit. Be conscious about the shape of shrub. Remember it's a three-dimensional shape. This area where I'm just like circling about is probably where it sticks out most. So anything below 
the center line, well, this bit, under this bit, should be dark. And uh, because no light reaches to that place, well, not, not n none, but very little light. So keep that in mind while you draw it. And then the bits at the top. Now, remember that this, they stick out and they are also three dimensional shapes. Like, think them, think about them like cylinders, okay? So, you got the light shining uh, f from one part, and once again, contrast theory. Theory, the light part's gonna be here, and the dark part's gonna be on the left, so I'll color in the left with the dark color. Same story with this side and this side. Sorry, I'm lagging a little. Maybe a wee bit over here, because like this is this doesn't really receive any light, because like this is facing downwards. If you just think about it, we now what we want to do is to emphasize uh, to mark out the bright sides. I'm going to use a lighter color, but not too light. So somewhere around here, if you can see the color wheel. So any place directly, directly, I must emphasize that in line of the uh, light rays shall be colored so I actually reduce the brush size a little bit for oh and also while you draw it I'll make sure you look at it from away don't like zoom in and draw like that it's not gonna help you because if you draw like that you just end up being not conscious of where the light comes from and you end up screwing up the whole thing which and um, that's probably not what we want so do not zoom in and draw like that and always be conscious of where the light is coming from so if you see it see it from a far distance it looks like it's taking shapes i will actually make a little uh make it dip a little bit sorry for my english not dip there's a better word for it but not bother to grab the dictionary out so now what we need to do next is to do a bit of detail work now we're actually going to make the shrub look realistic let's do this like so, so basically we want to make the dark bits blend with the light bits, so that's pretty much what we need to do now, it's pretty simple. So between the border, between the uh, dark area and the light area, just start filling it up with uh, the in-between colors, like the medium colors. Alright, and you also want to do it for the other bits over here. Let's do better. Okay, so we're pretty much done. So as you can see, we got the main shape going. It looks pretty realistic right now. We'll also draw the leaves manually as well. I draw the leaves one by one. I am not joking. Well, not one by one, but you'll see. I will change the brush size down a little bit. And so for each individual leaves, it's gonna be about, actually this brush size too small. Maybe around eight. Yeah, eight's perfect. So each individual leaf is gonna be about that big. Depends on the size of your brush. It's your own. It's your own choice. It's your own free will. So make up, make that decision yourself. Have fun. In the transition areas is where we will draw most leaves. So it's gonna go like this. So basically, you just need to just keep drawing these. I'm not sure if you can really see it. I'll zoom in so you can see it. Now you just need to just like just make these little leaf patterns going along. The other step is now to make the edges more natural. So if you look at a real life bush, it's not going to like have a straight solid edge like that. It's basically just leaves just spreading out a bit. So that's probably what we want to do for now. So basically as you can see it gives like a bushy effect to it. Looks more natural, looks more real. All right, so I can, as you can see, I pretty much finished the dotting job. And I didn't really naturalize the bottom bits because usually uh, there will be a giant shadow down here, which and people aren't really going to notice the edge down there because of shadow. Okay, so um, what you want to do now is to apply the color theory into this. The leaves over here are just green. It's just basically the same tone of green, but with the uh, darkness, uh, I mean the... Actually, yeah, the darkness and the exposure changed a bit. But if I, I'm going to add a yellowish tone to it by doing this. Now, uh, watch and learn, kids. I Now, first of all, I'm going to select the greenish tone I used for the shrub and I'm gonna move the palette up to the yellow a bit. Now the reason for this is because the lighter bits, especially the lighter bits, it gets 
uh, affected by the color of a light. So we got a uh, warm, warmish tone light shining down. So it's going to have a warm tint to it. Now I'm gonna move it up the scale a bit to make it a bit more white. Now for the uh, bright side, for bright edges, just fill it up, just randomly dot it around like so. This for all the leading edges of the, our lovely shrub over here. And now you can see it has a yellowish tint to it, which is nice, but however, that's not enough. So, however, the transition bits between the light bits and the dark bits need their own yellowish tone as well. Or it's gonna look pretty ridiculous. Okay, now our ultimate weapon for color orange. First of all, I recommend you to decrease the opacity to around 50 uh, yeah 50 should be fine and then you select the orange area which I already did and and then just start filling like just doing uh, filling up the transition between the uh, dark side and the bright side. and uh, as you go along to the dark edge you want to decrease the brightness of the colors. And for the bright bits, uh, you should use a lighter tone, so move your color selector to the right edge and also make it a bit yellowish. It's color theory stuff, we'll get used to it one day. Now um, for the dark bit, it looks a bit bland, does it? Now we're gonna change that. What you want to do is to put the color wheel selector, not the diamond selector, to around purple, a purplish color. You might want to make it a bit darker, like so. And you just do the same thing, like how you did to the uh, uh, shrub, so for the brighter bits up there. Sorry, I, I, I lose my words sometimes. Yeah. So we kind of nailed it. But unfortunately, I'm still not happy with it because I'm mystical. I'm a blood perfectionist. And so basically, just select the green again, maybe give it a make it, make it a bit less yellowish, and just decrease the brightness down a bit. Okay, maybe made it a bit too dark. So for the top bits, we have a warmer color, colors such as yellow, such as orange. But as we go down here, we would have, like down to the darker side, oh my god, why do you keep saying that? You would want to use um, colder colors, like colors with a colder tone. Those colors include maybe like a bluish green, green slash turquoise, turquoise, is it turquoise? Like, you guys are common, tell me, okay? Uh, blue or purple, like, yeah, maybe purple. But uh, one last thing we want to do is the final touch. Now select the pencil tool over here. You would want to select a brownish color of your choice. Doesn't really matter because it's a pretty minor part. I would like to choose, actually you want to make it pretty dark. Depends on your uh, shrub. Um, so basically the point is you would want to make some branches like that. Here we go, we're done. Hooray! All right, so yes, as I have said earlier, my um, my commentary skills are really, really bad. Yeah, I just stuttered. That's some good evidence right there. So yeah, my brain doesn't really catch up with my mouth and my brain just goes, Oh, go mouth, you can do this. Oh, whatever, you're gonna screw up anyway. So yeah, once again, I must reiterate this. It's a testing episode. So yeah, uh, have a nice day and see you next time.